Batman, a character that has been embraced as arguably the most popular superhero in recent times and an icon for many. If you are interested in possibly the most important lesson to learn from Batman, then this video is for you. The truth is, I've always wanted to do a video on the Dark Knight for a long time and simply couldn't think of the subject I should do it on, as there's a lot to take from the character and it's one of the reasons he's so popular in pop culture since conception back in 1939. He's my favourite comic book superhero and I've been fascinated with the character from the comics, cartoons, TV and film. There's incredible depth to pick from, which is why I found myself in the conundrum of not knowing what subject I should do the video on. Recently, I was listening to talks by Jordan Peterson, who speaks about the concept of becoming a monster in life, which exemplifies not only what makes Batman such an important and unique character, but highlighted possibly the most important lesson one can take from him. So in this video, we explore what it means to become a monster and the concept of Carl Jung's concept of the shadow, how Batman became a monster and what this means for you in your life. Number 1. What is the shadow? Swiss psychiatrist Carl Jung first came up with the concept of the shadow which he describes as follows. The shadow is a moral problem that challenges the whole ego personality, for no one can become conscious of the shadow without considerable moral effort. To become conscious of it involves recognising the dark aspects of the personality as present and real. This act is the essential condition for any kind of self-knowledge. In essence, the shadow is an aspect of ourselves that we don't consciously acknowledge, but in order to grow as a mature and responsible individual, we need to acknowledge. Humans have a propensity for great evil, we've seen many examples of it in our histories as a species and as much as someone might want to deny the same of themselves, the fact is, we're all capable of it. It's through acknowledging, accepting or confronting our shadow that we mature as individuals in life, with a chance of controlling it to be used as a strength, rather than dismissing it that could be projected in other destructive ways. I'm planning another video on delving deeper into the concept as I barely scratched the surface here, but we see its importance when Jordan Peterson speaks about becoming a monster and when Batman begins his war on crime. Number 2. How Jordan Peterson Explains the Monster So we've discussed this idea of the shadow, but then what is the monster that each of us becomes through the course of our lives? Personally, I see it in a way as taking on the responsibility each of us have as we mature in our individual growth, and as part of that maturity you accept that you can't please everybody or do what you may want to. Think of it being as the one to be able to take the hard decision, even if morally and ethically it calls into question what you want to believe. For most of us, this will often come with decisions we're faced with at work or at home where many may not like what we choose to do, but we do so because if we don't then the potential consequences are far worse. Number 3. How Batman Becomes the Monster In the case of Batman, this comes in his actions to fight crime, as there is moral ambiguity on his actions as a vigilante and with it comes a lot of criticisms in various stories in his history. However, regardless of that he chooses the virtuous path to fight crime and even to beat criminals to a bloody pulp night after night, knowing there are many who oppose him and they aren't just the criminals he fights. But the key in embracing your shadow and becoming a monster is that you learn to control it and that you now use your shadow for productive means. This is the reason why Batman sets himself rules, such as no killing when embarking on his mission, because if he doesn't hold back, he lacks control and reduces himself to the evils he wants to stop so that innocent victims don't have to face the pain as he did when his parents were murdered. So he accepts becoming a monster, a vigilante violently fighting crime night after night, but with a virtuous purpose, which is to protect innocent people who are vulnerable. Number 4. Why it's important to be a monster so with everything we've said so far, do we really need to be a monster? Well, the harsh truth is that we're always a monster in life if you reach adulthood. The reason is that we bear responsibility for both our actions and inaction, 
with both being a choice and both having consequences when you're placed in a position of responsibility, which is inevitable when you become an adult. What's critical to understand is that the more responsibility that you take on in life, the greater the monster you become, as you're accepting the role of taking on responsibility so that others don't have to. This is precisely what's happened with Batman, he accepts and acknowledges his role as a monster, his willingness to embrace parts of the shadow to give hope to others. This is prevalent in both the Dark Knight and Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, as you can see in the following quotes. I can do those things, because I'm not a hero, not like that. I killed those people, that's what I can be. No, no, you can't, you're not. I'm whatever Gotham needs me to be. New rules. We're criminals, Alfred. We've always been criminals. Nothing's changed. Oh, yes it has. Number 5. A Personal Story of Becoming a Monster We know how the shadow plays a role in being a monster, and what it means to accept your position as a monster, and why this is important to do. To really give a clear example of this point, let me speak of an experience I faced myself back in 2012. In October of that year, my grandmother, and played a hugely significant role in my upbringing, passed away. I remember the very moment she passed, as she was at home in bed when my father asked me to come look at her as she drew her last breath. I realised within a couple of moments what had happened as others started to come into the room. It was at that point I had to take the responsibility and acknowledge what others didn't want to, which is she was gone. In that moment, as what I said sunk in for others, I immediately saw the emotional response and outpouring, and I quickly took my niece, less than a year old at the time, into my arms and took her to another room to play with her while others grieved. This was a moment where I took on the role of the monster. I stepped away from mourning to play. The fact is, I had to control my emotions to protect a child in that moment, and honestly while I understand that that may appear a heartless way to react to losing someone so close, I accepted my responsibility to ensure the well-being of a baby and not expose her to something she wouldn't understand and may end up being afraid of. And this isn't something unique to me, it's something we all do every day as we mature, whether we want to or not. And it's something that Batman did in his story as well. He embraced the monster, so that he could protect the innocent. To quote the ever brilliant Dark Knight, he's the hero that Gotham deserves, but not the one it needs right now. So we'll hunt him, because he can take it, because he's not a hero, he's a silent guardian, a watchful protector, a Dark Knight. Are you a fan of Batman? Let me know in the comments section below. Please like, share and subscribe as we help you live life on your terms. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to ensure YouTube notifies you of the latest uploads. Thanks for watching.